Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Steve Mendez. I'm the now-gen pastor at Momentum Church. What's up, everybody? I'm Tyler. I'm the creative director here at Momentum Church. It's Tyler McNeely, in case you yes. want his last name. And this is The Current. Let's go. Which is current events and Pastor Tim's current message. We're going to talk to you guys. And if you've noticed, we have a third. We have a... A guest. A guest. A guest. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Izzy Zach. Um, I am a weightlifter. Um, and yeah, I yeah. go to this church too. <laughs> yeah. So she's one of our amazing high yeah. schoolers. Yes. We've talked about her on past podcasts. We promised you a guest. And we promised yeah. a guest. We came through. That's right. It is yeah. spring break. So Woo-hoo. she does not have school. Perfect. So it worked out. It worked out really, it really well. Did. Worked out really, really well. well. Guys, hello, yeah. friends. We're doing it. Yeah. This is nice. This is fun. This is good. This is fun. This is good. So you. Yeah, what's up? You were not here last week. Because <laughs> you had an amazing vacation with was, your wife. I did. How was yeah. it? Tell us it about was it, man. It was awesome. Yeah? We, uh, what I learned is we, um, when her and I, like, we vacation really well. It's good. We do. It's good. And... <laughs> That's good, good, man. <laughs> What's funny is, um, but we do it, we do it incidentally. I don't know if this makes sense or not. Like we, when we do vacations by ourselves yeah. with the kids and stuff, like we will just stumble upon these really magical moments. Did you mean accidentally? Incidental. There's incidents. Yeah. Is it? Is there incidental? Is like you don't plan it; it just kind of happens. Accidental. No, the accidents are bad. Not always. <laughs> Happy accidents. I accidentally ran into you. Happy little accidents. Yeah. So yeah, so we so, have these <laughs> accidental <laughs> moments that are just like really magical moments, man. It's, it's really good, cool. Man. Like, so we did, I'll give you an example. We did Disney without the kids like three or four years ago, maybe two years ago. I don't remember. But anyways, we just happened to find ourselves like right on, um, I think it was Thunder Mountain, right as like the fireworks were going off yeah and so you just kind of like come over this little thing hill and you see the castle and the fireworks and stuff you can't plan sure like or maybe people do i I mean you could you 100 percent could but you did not we did not not. we just stumbled on it and then we were in blue ridge and um last night we were there we went over to helen georgia helen georgia i've been there have you yes there you go isn't it just Isn't the it, quaintest? It's like, it's like the cutest little like German town. That's what he was so telling me. Here's yes. the thing. Yeah. I, no. Is it German? Okay, I don't know. Have but you like, been to Germany? No. See, I'm not. So I felt weird saying. <laughs> it looks like Germany. Like 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 yeah. Now here's what I know. It looks like the uh, the Germany Pavilion at Epcot. So that's what I've been telling people. Yeah. Well, I'm like, like maybe it's Germany. Maybe yeah. I don't. But know. it's like the American stereotype of Germany. That's what it yeah. feels like. Like if I was to go to a restaurant called Bavaria. That's like, exactly oh, what it felt like. This is Germany. Yeah. Like we had this um, awesome restaurant right on the river. Yeah. Like you're, you're, literally, you're eating at this German restaurant on the Chattahoochee River. Way down so it yonder. Just feels weird. <laughs> was it that song on the dude, Chattahoochee? I hate that song so much. Was it hot? Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> I don't want to keep it's going. It's awful. I have a tenuously related question. Well, let me finish the story first. It has to do with a midpoint to your story, yeah, and absolutely. I don't want to go off on a tangent. Go for it. So Disney, I can keep up. You did Disney with just the misses. I've been there before with just the misses, yeah. with not the kids. I've, I've been there a bunch. Two part question: One, we are annual pass holders. It's yeah, not that's, a big deal. Do you consider yourself a Disney adult? <laughs> and what is your opinion of Disney adults? I was going to ask that. <laughs> so, uh, present company excluded. Pretend Connor's not listening. I don't want to hurt his feelings. But so, no, I understand what you're saying. I yes. know the context. I do not consider myself a Disney adult as okay. far as like, like I don't go and dress up and like sure. wear Mickey ears, wear Mickey ears, <laughs> hang out in Disney Springs and buy all the apparel and wear Have it to work. Have you seen there's, the, the there's a, I forget it's a TikTok or something, but they're talking about like, <laughs> in this TikTok, they're talking about this like, in a zombie apocalypse, Disney adults are like the most dangerous ones. Are they? But that's what they say, because <laughs> if you take Disney away from them, yeah, they're just rabid. Yeah. Rabid. Anyways, yeah. so no, I do not consider myself a Disney adult. My okay. opinion of them is I don't. I do my best in life to try not to take things away from people. Sure, yeah. So like, if it means a lot to them, hey, yeah. If you have an unhealthy it. addiction, we just let you have it. It's fine. Well, yeah. Why would I, I help somebody that. through an unhealthy addiction? That. That's true. No, I agree with you. I agree. Um, I've not been to Disney since I was in eighth grade. So I didn't go my entire childhood. I didn't go until I was married. Okay. So it would have been. Shout out to my wife, 12 years anniversary yesterday, 12 freaking years, man. That's amazing. Can you believe it, Izzy? It's a long time. 12 years. You guys got married young, man. That's good. We did. I was 22, 23, somewhere around there. Hey, you're running the race. Good for you. Man, doing my best. Anyway, so we were in Helen, Georgia, and um, just really quaint. So much fun. 
And um, but we just happened to like plan it to when we drove back. And the way you get there from Blue Ridge is you get the scenic route through the mountains. And yes. you, it's just yeah. super windy roads, ton of fun. Just awesome. Well, it's the way we go to camp, right? What's that? S- same way we go to high school camp? Because we go right through Blue Ridge on the way to high school camp. No. No? This is different. This is different? Okay. I've been, I know, I know that drive. Yeah. This is different. It felt like this felt like it was like you're literally going around this, along this mountain and there's a couple little scapes you can like. Is it intentionally different? Like you choose to take the scenic route? Yes. Okay. Like I got you. That's it's not they, the quickest point A to point B. You guys kind of choose I to meander know that the mountains. It's not. We'll get used to this. <laughs> I don't know that it's not, but yeah. I also don't know that it is either to answer your question. Okay. Educational. I got you. Educated. But it's a fun. Incidentally, it was incidentally. Fun. It, it was, was a lot of fun. fun. But good. so so anyways, so my point is we stopped back on the way back to Blue Ridge. Like it was like the sun was setting right over this like mountainscape and um and it was just incredible. That's like awesome, we literally man. backed the van up. Yeah. It was one of those moments where like if the van falls over this edge, I'm, we, I die happy. We, we perish. I die happy. Like, we you should post it on Instagram Reels. I should. You should. I should. I may have done that, Izzy. I'm glad yeah. you had that and vacation. If you followed though, me, then you would have good. seen that, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't follow you either, but it's okay. Izzy, it's has, Steve. Izzy has two accounts because she's really important. Yeah. We'll get to Izzy. She has two, two accounts. We'll get to Izzy. So you have to keep anyways, up with two so lifestyles. We just watched over this. We watched the sunset, back the van up, put the, you know, the, the, door of the van was it the white van y'all, y'all's van mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and just hung honda odyssey it's not a big deal it's a pretty big um, deal but then we popped the 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 door up and yep. just chilled in the back seat hung out for a little while that's awesome and, man you know that's great good times i love that so it was you, a great trip you had a great vacation i did have a great vacation you just had a great vacation you went to colorado last week i did week before um, yeah what, Ooh, well, did you go up there for business for pleasure for what was the um so my family like my grandma on my dad's side, she rents not actually no not rents, but she has a um, timeshare at a resort on the Love mountain. Timeshares. Um, and timeshares are the it, best. Yes, yeah. and it's just like <laughs> and so I've been going for like as long as I can remember. Like yeah. it's so like nostalgic being there because like Aww. I have skied that mountain since I was like four years old. So yeah. like I know like every year I go up there. Like I remember like you know when I was in ski school like learning like pizzas and french fries like on the little mountains obviously, and the freaking magic carpet that yeah. brings you up the mountain again like it's like a little bunny slope it was super cute this is my and favorite like, part that you told me though yeah. it's your grandma's timeshare but your family is so big and your grandma yeah. loves y'all so much <laughs> that she gets her own hotel room because yeah. she can't fit in her own timeshare yes yep. and she just like chooses to let y'all use the timeshare yeah. and then just doesn't stay with you yeah, yeah. she tries to like is if yeah you, if, if <laughs> If, if you there ever were, want to bring if, some if, if there were some financial <laughs> were room advice yeah. about timeshares you would like to, Oh yeah. Just let us know. Don't get one. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz to say that I don't want to take away memories from your childhood mm-hmm. cuz that's pretty incredible. Your your yeah. grandmother there has may been not stuck. be the most viable <laughs> financial decisions in the world. That's what you yeah. don't know. Your grandma's you know? been stuck in this timeshare for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying to get trying out. To get out. <laughs> yeah. That that is awesome. And what it was, if, what if Izzy's the one to sign it? Over from her grandmother, you take it, and her grandmother's like becomes Izzy, a YTH you're the time one. Sure. Yeah, maybe we can hike that. Maybe that's where we can have our YTH camp. They would die. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Well, in Breckenridge, we're not ready for Breckenridge. In Breckenridge, especially, they like there's we call like it Breck. yeah, Brecky. we call it Breck. yeah. In Breckies. Breck, there's like barely any like little slopes. Like it's no. like you're either going on a blue, a black, yes. or a double black, yeah, or yeah. a double black EX, which is like and and we know what, we know what those <laughs> things just, are. Yeah. But for those, we do know what we, those things are. We, we do. No, know, we, we know what these things know. are. But for those watching at home, when you say like black, you're talking about like the, the difficulty of the mountain. Correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tyler's, Tyler's come to two winter camps with me. You know how many times he's, <laughs> he's skied or snowboarded? Dude. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Tyler has this belief system, and it's not flawed. It's not wrong. Thank I you. just don't subscribe it's to not, it. It's not, yeah. That he doesn't want to die in a way that people would be like, that's really dumb. So like whitewater okay. rafting, skiing, he's like, if I'm going to perish, I don't want people to look at it and be like, that's a really dumb way to die. See, it's fun. What, like I'd see, I think yeah. I'd rather die doing something fun and see, not just being like, Bleh. it's not like, fun. It's not the right bed, word. You know? Yeah. Fun is, I, like, I do a lot of fun things. Yeah. It's, I don't want people to, in this, maybe get a little, well, I, I didn't use the word I know, on which, purpose. I tried but to, I think if you said it, he doesn't want to, like someone to be like, that's a really white way to die. Yeah. That's his thing. <laughs> that's, like, I don't want them to look at this and go, freaking white people. That is a white way to die. You were trapped under a whitewater raft. I'm from Memphis. You, you have to remember that. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. what? 
What do you say? Florida man. Florida, Florida man gets yeah. stuck under a raft. <laughs> yeah. Gets, st- gets his head stuck under a raft. Uh, yep. Yeah. Terrifying. Which it did happen. Which so you do happen. have post traumatic stress about almost uh, dying under I'm a raft. Fine. It's fine. We're um, all fine. It's okay. You're yeah. here. You made it. But yeah, so cool, 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 cool stuff. Yeah. Anyways, timeshares, just maybe look into them before you sign on the dotted line. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you need advice, there's probably plenty of people who can give it. Yeah. And if a Nigerian prince ever emails you and says like, hey, send me a million dollars and I'll give you 10 million. It's just like a timeshare. Uh, just, just ask just, questions. Just ask questions. <laughs> just ask people before you do that. Maybe. Just <laughs> ask people. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, was at the zoo. Saturday? I saw that. I saw mm-hmm. um, your little baby feeding the giraffes. Dude, the zoo is the most amazing place. It's pretty magical. Why people don't go there more often? I, I don't understand. There. I, don't, I, I live right there, man. Years. You I live in the, the zoo. giraffes. I'm one neighborhood Fun over. Fun facts about I the, the zoo I found out. every day. Did you know that the orangutan was like artificially created? What? Yeah. It's not a real ape? Well, no, no. I would see this is tricky, is it? Because we were in the little train and the yeah. little speaker system was going on. They were like... Yeah, this orangutan was created. She said like a weird word, like artificially created or something. So I don't know what that means. Does that mean like that specific it's one weird. was engineered in the yes, lab? I okay. believe is what not, she was. Not the implying. genus of orangutans were no. like man made. Okay. But it was weird because the <laughs> orang- the orangutan had was had a blanket on. Was it a polio blanket? No, I don't know. Was it, was it just, wearing shorts? It was literally like a blanket like wrapped around. Oh. And I just thought that's a very weird. It's a strange. Yeah. Anyways, that and then the gorillas. Did you know that they can't swim? Gorillas cannot swim. Do you know why? No. Is it their muscle mass? Know? It is. Yeah, that wow. makes sense. Well, nope. Because they don't have enough fat to be buoyant. It's the density of their muscles. Yeah. Density of their muscle mass mm-hmm. makes sense. So they they sink right to the bottom. Yeah. Which <laughs> led me to ask some questions. Yeah. Like how how long before we figured that out? True. Like how many? How many jumped in and were like. I could do this. How many are there? Any gorillas on the bottom of that little river? Did they adapt? The, they Did they live there not. now? Well, um, could you even pull them out because they're so heavy? That's true. With a winch, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Also, fun fact: speaking yeah. of big animals in water, if I were to tell you or ask you what the body fat percentage of a hippo is, what would you say? Because we we hippos have become synonymous with like fat. Like, See, oh, I feel like they're muscular though. They are four percent body fat. Yeah. So, do you know yeah. hippos kill? Oh, they everything. more people a year than I think. Have you ever seen their mouth open? Yeah, I yeah. know. One hundred and eighty degrees. Literally, like straight up, straight down, <laughs> death trap. Dude, the videos of them like chasing people in like the Nile and oh, stuff. Yeah. It's absolutely terrifying. But four percent body fat. That's it. Mm-hmm. You, uh, yeah, that's surprising. You would think that they're just full of that blubber. That is surprising. Not I at agree. All. Crazy. Yep. Yeah. So that's a fun tangent. Yeah. But I saw your boy feeding the the giraffes. That's Which cool. one, Theodore? Yeah, Theo. Theodore. The, you posted on social media with him with the lettuce. You were helping him feed the giraffes. Yeah, that was fun. Super cool, man. It was really cool. I do Good enjoy times. driving past the zoo every day and seeing the giraffes' little necks poking up over ninety eight, and it is like a <laughs> subtle thing that I. Yeah. I'm like that's awesome. You like, like what that. a fun thing I yeah. can see a giraffe every day, every day, every single day. Yeah. Yeah. And unless you like live on the. Su- Safari, yeah, Savannah, safari. Savannah. I think on I think Safari, on Safari, yeah. Oh, you're on Safari in Savannah, not Georgia. On the Savannah, there's been a death in you're Savannah. Not in Savannah, you're on the Savannah, right? Sahara, Savannah. Gosh, it's a lot of S words. I'm getting confused. Is he here in school? Help us out. Yeah. <laughs> Where do these cause. words cross? Well, so, okay, so let's dig well, into this. I think like a safari is like what you like go do, right? That's what you I thought. Do like, a safari like you're like, on, like, verb, you're, like right? on a safari. So you can do a safari like, in the Sahara. Yeah. yeah. But is a savanna savanna. like an ecosystem? I think, I think a savanna so. yeah. is a type of ecosystem. Mass. Yeah. Land mass. Like, yeah. I think it's like yeah. I'd say the plains, the forest, the, the savanna, and the Sahara is a specific. Sahara is a desert, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're right. Dude, did you? Well, this is right. a whole other tangent, but well, yeah. Well, we're here. What's up? <laughs> well, they talked about it. the eye of the Sahara. Have yeah. you seen that? The eye of the Sahara? Mm-hmm. And how it could potentially be evidence for like Atlantis. Ooh. Like if you go look oh. at it, it literally has these little rings. Pretty wild. Cool. Anyways. I like that. So Izzy's here, if you don't, if you guys haven't noticed. And She's here. Um, even better than timeshare advice, Izzy's here to tell us about, she's a superhuman. She's a superhero. <laughs> Like, she, it's pretty crazy. If you've ever seen the movie Captain America, she is what happens after the government gets a hold of him. That's <laughs> <laughs> She's post Chris, she's, um, what's his name? Chris Evans. She's post Chris Evans yes. in the machine. She is post. So, yeah. That's pretty, um. It's pretty spot so on. What do you, so, like, what do you squat? Um, I squat, like, 
two seventy five, I think. A high school girl. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's unreal. It's unreal. Hey, I, I scroll more than that. It's not a big deal. It's a, well, but, you're a thirty five year old man, Tyler. <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> don't take that away. It's still a lot. Don't take that away from Izzy. I won't. She's I won't. worked really hard at this. So I don't know why you're trying to make this about yourself. So but. squat, it's an amazing squat. What's yeah. impressive is her Olympic lifts because they're so technical and precise. The cleans. Clean and jerk and, and the snatch. Jerks. Yeah. The way my shoulders are set up, my snatch is zero because I can't <laughs> get that bar where it needs to be. What, yeah. did, what did you snatch at? Was it regionals? Was that your last one? Uh, it was state. State? Yeah. yeah. I snatched uh, 165 at state. It's unreal. But I've been in like a weird plateau for like months and it's really annoying. So, but my snatch max went down and then I had to like chemicals? work my way back up. No. Okay. <laughs> no. As you should not yeah. Just to be clear, you won state. Yes, I did. So that, yeah, we should probably yes. preface. You won state. So, so Izzy yes. is a state champion. Correct. Yes, so from Navarre High School. Yes. What, what? Um, and then shout yes. out your team, your private team too. Yep. And then, yeah, I was the traditional runner up, but here's the thing. It was a three way tie. So our totals were um, 390, like all three of us were yeah. 390. Um, but the person that got first, she weighed 169.1. So if you know anything about weight classes, the yep. one right below mine is 169.0. Yeah. So like there's literally no way I could have beaten her unless I weighed, like there's no way actually. Yeah. Like unless was I was no in it a whole, a exactly. Yeah. And I bet you she did that on purpose. I bet you she underweighed and then drank just like just for tiebreaker purposes. Yeah. And then she yeah. drank like probably like I don't even know water to like get to point one. I'm yeah. like, there's no way that you just weighed one sixty nine point one and one eighty three. Like right. that's just insane. Yeah. But it was a three way yeah. tie, and then but I underweighed someone that was below me, and then that's why I got second. Yeah. But I'm like first place in my heart. You are. Hey, yeah. you got first place in Olympic. Yes, but I'm really proud of that. This is yes. the crazy part of your journey is you've been doing this for less than two years. Yes, my first year was last year. I was That's a sophomore when hour. I did it. However, I did do like CrossFit, um, like with my stepdad. Yeah. That's kind of where it all started. Cause like on Instagram and stuff, like I used to see like people like working out and like yeah. being fit. And I was like, I want to do that so bad. Like, I feel like that would like, I don't know. It was just like this weird thing that I like really see wanted the to do. We post and they're like, man. And like, yeah, I get yeah. It. Totally like get I, it. like I. It's almost like I just knew that like that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then like, um, I think like January of like 2023 or 2022, one of those years. Um, I started CrossFit, and then that's kind of where I learned to like sketchy Olympic lift. <laughs> you yeah. know, like obviously yeah. he's not like a olympic you know coach but he kind of taught me like the movements and stuff like that sure. um and that's kind of where like it all started and then the, from there for cheer for the high school you have to do summer workouts over the over the summer um and then from there coach bagley which is the girls lifting coach yep. he saw me and, and, and he just, was like just for yeah. context because we know these people yeah coach bagley is the football coach and the weightlifting coach and his wife is the cheerleading coach yes. so there's like crossover yeah. there where the lifting and the cheering like it's the same couple yeah that is like 50 percent of, of our team yeah. is cheerleaders Correct. it's really funny the cheerleaders get pushed yeah. to weightlifting <laughs> because the coaches of each of those are yeah. married so it's yeah. like oh in the off season do the weightlifters ever get pushed to cheerleading <laughs> yes okay so the Navarre cheerleading team all the guys that are on competition cheer are on the weightlifting team and football players. Mm -hmm. It's like these six to eight stacked dudes oh, wow. that are competitive weightlifters and cheerleaders. Competitive mm -hmm. cheerleaders. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's exciting. Yep. So that is exactly how it works. What yeah. was what was the moment for you that you were like, I think I'm actually good at this. Like better than everyone. Yeah, like you're like, <laughs> yeah, we're like, was there a moment you were in the gym and you were lifting something and you were like, I don't mm. know, was it a look from somebody? Was it like a... No, I mean, honestly, like, I definitely, honestly, I don't even think that now, you know, like, I, so humble, I choose, so humble, I, I so choose humble. to, like, remain, yeah. you know, like, I remain humble, like, as much as I can, because, yeah. like, honestly, like, there's people that are always going to be better than you, stronger than you, faster than you, you know, like, yep. you know, like, until you win the Olympics, and then yeah, you well, can say that you are, yeah. But no, I'm not in the Olympics yet. And also like, <laughs> you know, yes, God keeps yeah. me humble. Cause think about that's it. Good. Think good. about Just, it. Yeah. You know, like, like, Just think about it. God can like clean and jerk the entire universe. Wow. And like, I'm Put happy. That shirt. And, like, Put that on a shirt. Put that on a shirt. And like, I'm, and then, like, I'm happy over here with my 215 clean and jerk, but like, humble brag. he's like, 
he's, he's like cleaner jerking the entire universe and he's like so, happy for me that I'm able yeah, to like do he, what I here's do. Here's the moment I knew you were built different. Like I was having a conversation with you because I keep up with your weightlifting and everything and you had a meet and you were super down on yourself. You're yeah. like, I scratched. I only got my opening weight. So if you don't know, you get three shots and mm -hmm. if you fail a lift, you have to, you can't up the weight. You have to go yeah. for the weight you fail. Yeah. yeah. We all knew that. She was like, I scratched the first two. I only got my opening weight on my third lift. I'm super bummed. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. She's like, no, but I, I took first. I was like, oh, so your opening weight was better than <laughs> anybody's, anybody's attempt at all three yeah. of theirs. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. So what See, you deemed yeah. was your safe opening weight was stronger than anybody else yeah. in the competition. See, that's, that's kind of how a lot of my season went. And like, I'm really, you know, blessed to be able to like say that, you know, like I can, I can only do one of each of my lifts and still be able to place first. But um, like it's still that like this past season, it was like really hard for me yeah. though, because mentally, like exactly game, think yeah. about it. Like, and like talking about it, like I think that people don't realize because from the outside looking in, it seems like I had this amazing season, first place, first place. And you, you know, like she's, you know, doing so good, you know, like mm -hmm. district champ, regional champ, state champ, like, wow. Like, you know, she must be so proud of herself, you know? And like, yeah, but that's, that's not how it really was, you know, like I was never really, how was you know, it really? fully proud of myself. Well, you see because you scratches like, on the platform. Exactly. You set goals and you weren't yeah. achieving the goals exactly. you set for yourself. Yeah, because yeah. like my season started like all the way up here. Mm -hmm. We had a mock meet. I got two brand new maxes. I was like, this is yeah. great. Going to have a great season. I'm so excited. Well, on and that then, mock like, meet, from where there, did you break out in the nation? Just. Um. Oh, yeah. Well, I was ranked, I think, second in the nation. I'm actually... <laughs> Still ranked so second stupid. in the nation. <laughs> so crazy. Um, and then <laughs> just a side quest. Yeah. The so after the country. So the after after that, Steve, not the country. It was just like nation. it was just down. And then uh, and then like, hold on. Yeah. No no no. Why hold don't hold on? <laughs> what did she just say? Her story? I just you heard what I said. Did you say the whole nation, not the country? <laughs> that's, that's what I said. <laughs> you know those are synonyms, right? They mean the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> Like Lizzie, the nation I just didn't of want America. To, you to correct you. Yeah. I just wanted to hear your story. Yeah, the entire country. And I don't know why of we're the making the United States. Yeah, the nation is the nation. The whole nation. Second in the entire nation of the United <laughs> States of America, okay. which is That's also impressive. a country. Yeah. So, yes. Continue. Yeah. So, <laughs> so my weightlifting season started good, and then it kind of went down, and then like towards like regionals, it kind of spiked up again. But like during that hard time, yeah. Like, um. Like knowing this now, like after the season, like I, it was like a very like spiritual thing for me because yeah. like I learned a lot and I was like, you know, it really humbled me, you know, yeah. and it put me and it put me into a perspective where I was like, you know, I really had to lean on God and trust him because like I, you know, I didn't know what he was doing, you know, yeah. like I was like, why am I like, mm -hmm why my max is going down? Like, why am I, why do I feel like I suck? You know, and like it got to a point where like, I wanted to quit weightlifting completely because I hated it. I remember having that conversation. You know, like I, you. I, I hated that. it, yeah. you know, like every single meet I would do like my 80% and it would feel like the whole world on my shoulders. And you know, like that would, it would like, it's so, you know, unmotivating when you're like making downhill progress, yeah. but you know, like, that's yeah. where, that's kind of where you get stronger and, you know, in your, in yourself and in your faith too, is like yeah. learning how to trust God and, you know, the times where you don't really want to. And like, also that really taught me that like without God, like we are nothing. This took a very you know? positive tangent. Yeah. And then like, I like this. Well, and you know, like with like state and stuff, like I was like, you know, none of this would be possible without God, you right. know? And like, yeah. I'm so grateful that like, you know, I got to experience that as, you know, a junior and I'm, you know, really grateful that like, I did trust him, you know, like all the, like, you know, the hard times. And like, I remember at the pace meet, like I literally like had to walk outside because like I had hurt my hip that meet. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the lowest of the low. Like I, my cheer coach had to take me outside. She's the assistant weightlifting coach. So she took me outside and like, I was just like sobbing. I was like hands on my knees, like, you know, like bent over, you know, I was just like sobbing and like hyperventilating and I was like, I hate this, you know, like I feel like I suck and I like, <laughs> you know, and it was just a really hard, yeah. you know, yeah. um, time to like go with, but it's just like, you know, learning how to overcome that and just like, yeah, that was like one of the biggest things. That's good. And like now I'm like not even like mentally the same person I was before this season. And like, that's so important, you know? Yeah. yeah. And like, now- What I'm, are some of those yeah. changes? 
So like now into this season. it's just a different mindset on like how things happen. You know, like if you don't do good at a meet, you know, it's like, fine, it's, it's okay. You You're know? more content with that. Yeah, now. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Your whole world doesn't yeah. fall on a single failure. Yeah. Cause I used to like beat myself up about like doing bad at a meet, you know, and like, I would be like, and, and doing bad yeah. is completely subjective. Cause yeah. you would still do really good in the eyes of like yeah. what the world yeah. thought, what the crowd thought, what the rankings thought. Yeah. But for you, it was a failure because you had set such a high bar for yourself. Yes. Yep. I, yeah. I, yeah, I hold myself to like a very high standard and like when that standard doesn't meet or like when I don't meet that standard of my own self. And that's tough. Exactly. Yeah. Cause like when you're like when your own, like when you're your own self enemy or whatever, like it's hard because like no one else is putting that much pressure on yourself, but right. you. And it's, mm -hmm. it's hard when the season starts with you being told, Hey, you're ranked two in the nation. Yeah. And now you're like, oh, well, now I have that expectation to carry. Yeah. I'm supposed to win these meets. Yeah, I'm exactly. supposed to be perfect on yeah. the platform. I'm supposed to go nine for nine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I'm not now, the surprise anymore. Right. Yeah. I'm not the, I'm not the secret weapon. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. expecting me to come out the gates exactly. and blow it out the water. Yeah. So when I fail, I feel like every eye is looking at me like, yeah. oh, man. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. Yeah. That's, that's literally exactly how I felt because, yeah. like, I had so much pressure on myself because, like, I knew going into that season – from how the mock meet went, I knew that I was going to be able to do something with this high school team and, you know, like get us points at these meets, you know, and that are important, you know, to beat pace and, you know, to beat all these teams that are like have really amazing lifters on them. Yeah. You know, I needed to get my lifts and like, you know, I was one of the most important people on that team. And from being a nobody on that team to being one of the most important being the person and that was a huge switch and i think that was so hard to like deal with yeah over the season because like that's a lot of pressure oh, yeah. you know like on imagine. yourself you know and yep. like no one else was putting that on me and like my whole team would tell me you know they'd be like you know no one else is putting that much pressure on you you know like you're literally doing it you know to yourself right. and i'm like that's like that's so true yeah 100%. and like yeah that was definitely like a really hard thing to like, you know, realize is that like, you know, you're, you're almost doing this to yourself. Yeah. And like, um, but yeah, that was a really weird switch for me switching from like, you know, not really getting points to getting a lot of points. Yeah. And that was, you know, the biggest blessing, but the biggest curse at the same time, yeah. it really taught me a lot, but it was yeah. like, yeah, it was a, Back Good to learning the whole, experience, like, though. The Captain America aspect of your life. Because the way you're talking right now, if somebody didn't know you, it'd be easy for them to be like, oh, well, she must have had a terrible year, terrible season, washed up, <laughs> failed a bunch. <laughs> if you had an autobiography, it would be called, like, Oops, I Made Varsity. Oh. There's so many sports <laughs> that you're like, I could try that. And then you audition, and they're like, cool, you're on varsity. Like, oh, I've touched a football before. I guess I'll try flag football. They're like, yep, you're starting varsity. Come on out. <laughs> like, oh, cheerleading? I've, yeah, I could lead a cheer. Okay, cool. You're on varsity. Well, you, I was on JV my first year. But you, oops, you I are. Made varsity. <laughs> oops, I made varsity. You out, are. Yeah. You outperform yeah. so much at such a high level. But your humble mindset is like, oh, well, I'm not hitting my own standard. But mm -hmm. just for the, the people out there, like, you are phenomenal when it comes to discipline and athletics and this is just a testament to your humble mindset the way that you're sitting on this microphone talking about like oh i'm such a failure like, <laughs> like you're not by any yeah, metrics yeah. that you could put on paper but what a mindset to have mm. like man i i should be better i could mm -hmm. be better i'm letting my teammates down yeah always and yeah. like i like this like this season i for flag football i tried out um and like one of our girls got hurt and like I had to fill in for that starting spot, and like, of course, it was one of the biggest games of the season, pace, Why and be? Um, of course. Yeah. And I was like, oh gosh, like I, <laughs> I need what to walk in. Um, a defensive like linebacker, so I stay short gotcha. um, on defense. Definitely not offense. Yeah, <laughs> I cannot catch the ball to save my life, but maybe interceptions, just not like thrown. You know. Understood. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not me. Anyways, but like. Every time I would go off the field, I'd be like, coach, like, what can I do better? You know, like, how can I improve? You know, and like, yeah. that's just, you know, my mindset. I'm like, because well, like. So, that's so important to yeah. have that, that mindset, yeah. you know, that mindset of like asking for feedback yeah. instead of waiting to be corrected. Yeah, because yeah. I'm like, tell me what I'm doing wrong. And uh, then yeah. he was like, you're not doing anything wrong. But I'm like, I feel like I am. I can like, tell you that that trait 
yeah. of asking for feedback will literally put you ahead of like it'll put you in the top yes by what you say five percent three percent because it's it's easy to be great and know you're great yeah and just settle there yeah and then everybody else will pass you and even like in your careers and as you get older and, and you go through life that mindset of like you have a boss one day hey boss what can i do better yep. you know or a director hey what can i how what did you see even asking your subordinates from time mm-hmm. to time 100 I mean, it's a yeah. testament to pastor tim how many times has he sat in a room with us and been like hey guys where did mm-hmm. i miss it where can oh, yeah. i be better and anytime like anytime if you you know if you get the opportunity to speak or preach it's one of the first things you know 100 ask him and say mm-hmm. hey man what did you see yep you know where did what's I your perspective what's your better? you know what blind spots did you see how can i get better um and just that that mindset right there will put you in that top percentile Put you ahead of everybody else because no one's doing that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So it's not comfortable. Kudos. It's not comfortable to ask where you're failing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To have somebody look you in the face and say, "Here's where you're missing it." Yeah, it's not yeah. comfortable. It's not something yeah. you want to do. Yeah, and well, also like when it's like with weightlifting and stuff, like technique is so like important. It's oh, yeah. the most almost the most important thing. You know, like I like to be corrected. You know, like mm-hmm. a lot of people take yeah. it the wrong way, but I'm like, I want to be better. Yeah, this is me better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, tell me what I'm doing wrong so I can be better. Like, right. You know, it's and not, when, it's not going to hurt my feelings. Like yeah. you're telling me what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. Like I'm not going to get butt hurt that I'm not right. doing everything perfect. Yeah. Like that's fine. I just need to know what I'm doing wrong so I can improve. Yeah. And, and like that's just, when, you, when you are corrected, framing it in the right way too, yeah. because that's when you get to understand and have a perspective of like, man, my boss really is investing a lot in me to that's correct right. me. Yep. Yeah. It's those moments when, you know, you stop being corrected. Those are the moments I, you know, I would get worried. Yep. You know what I mean? If I were... <laughs> If I were somebody, those moments you stop getting corrected, stop getting feedback, mm-hmm. you know, because at that point it shifts from, you know, it's worth it to correct to it's not yeah, worth it. You're not you even know. worth it. It's a lost cause, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. But, Izzy, we're super proud of you. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you. So Cheering glad you, you made on. time to be here. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. One day yeah. you may squat as much as I do. Yeah. So <laughs> just keep, keep at it. You know, and so yeah. keep trying. And, yep. and then yeah. I'm also if you need tips or anything. Yeah, I'm also what? currently training for nationals too. Yep. So I'm not. Yeah. Doing that. I'm yeah, really if, excited. It's it's over the summer. And you could enter the what, yeah. 183 pound. Is that the way? It's uh, so they're different. Okay. So it's in everything is in kilograms, which is like two point two good and bad per pound. Yeah. And like, cause like sometimes like my coach will put stuff on the bar. He's like, do it, and I'm like, how much is that? And I'm like, I don't know how much that is. Right. He's just like, just lift it, and like, see, it's like. I don't know. Just like it, it's it's fun because like I never it. I never know what's on the bar, well, so what, I just so do for it. Nationals, <laughs> nationals what weight class are you gonna later. slide into? Eighty one. Eighty one. So yeah. that's one sixty two plus sixteen seventy one seventy eight one seventy nine mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Yeah, one seventy eight. With enough effort, be, you could be in the hundred seventy nine pound girls' it, high school weight class. Be a little bit of effort. <laughs> you could yeah. do it, man. You could make it. Well, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully not. Yeah. Hopefully not. Hundred seventy. Do you like that quick math, by the way? Yeah, that was I, that was actually really impressive. I don't know that it's correct. No one knows yeah. it's correct. It's times two point two. No, it is. Yeah, no it one, was. No one that's has like almost exact you with a calculator. She just it's did. like it's one seventy eight point something. something. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm so. saying. We don't know. We're assuming you're correct, <laughs> but thanks, man. Yeah, yeah you're appreciate, welcome. Appreciate it. All right. Um, great segue right now because we're is talking it, about yeah yeah. Hear me, yeah. hear me out. I'm, this is gonna I'm greasing the skids Let's real good. Go I was thinking the about skids. this. I, was think, I, was I know the what skids. the skids are. Do you know what the skids are? Is he? No. Wow. Maybe we explain it for other people and not use terms that no one knows. The skids. Grease the skids. So anyway, so as she was sitting here talking about, what we were they? talking about the skids? skids helicopters when they don't have wheels, they have skids. So like Hueys are on skids. Yes. And then you, anyway. So uh, yes, that's what I thought. So I knew. I knew you knew. Yes. But for everyone else. Everyone obviously. else. Obviously. You're going to keep everybody in the loop. Talking about coachability and being wrong and having someone speak into your life. And yeah. that was exactly what Pastor Tim did for the majority of this message mm-hmm. this week was sit there and say like, here's how you fish. Oh yeah. Here's how people miss it. Here's where <laughs> people present wrong. Here's where people yeah. don't bother learning the person on the other side of yeah. the conversation. And he, he really had like a fireside chat about yeah. this is, it's not just the hook. It's not just here's, the bait. Yeah. The gospel's important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your but testimony is important. It's the bait. It's but how like you do it. how you yeah. cast that reel. Yeah matters and us being around him so much you you see that one example of like the waitress you see that all yes, the time all the time mm-hmm. you know and, all the time um, he he does he never doesn't have his reel like he so, is casting yeah. <laughs> i was at the gym with him this morning and i think i saw him talk to 15 people yeah while we were working out in between sets he's always just like yep. there's another one there's another one there's another one another one An- another one another one 
But yeah. um, my so favorite. We're on week four, real fast. Before we yeah, jump last into week. week four of uh, let's, let's go, go fishing. fishing, and um, which also coincidentally, this is the fourth week in a row. Have you been invited to go fishing? Yep. I have not. Nobody has asked me. How about you? This did, is probably not the right time. To did talk you invite him? It's not important. To who who talk invited about you? That. Who invited you, Tyler? No one did. Yeah, I'm nobody. Just, I'm just as upset. Nobody has invited <laughs> yeah. us. We have so, asked for four, four weeks, weeks in a row that if you have a boat, like we've never done it. We've never done it. I mean, I've done it, but I've never done it. Well, Steve hasn't. You've done never it. gone fishing. I have done it, like from the beach, like cast into yeah. the, the ocean. Oh, yeah. but you've I've never done it from like, like a dock. I've never done like deep sea offshore fishing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You should hit my mom up. What? Because she's like a charter captain. <laughs> and Izzy, this is why we asked you on the podcast. Your, your mother is a charter captain on a, a fishing vessel? Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, this is perfect. We Tell have her to Let's go holler, fishing. We have a Call her at your boys. <laughs> We're doing it. Because your boys want to go fishing. Yeah. I would like to go catch a fish. So, yeah. I would like to go fishing. Catch, yeah. I want to catch a single fish. I want to catch one giant yeah, fish. But it was a pretty awesome message, man. So, so good. I love his use. So practical. So just helpful. So like, this yeah. is how you do it. Mm-hmm. And um, the word religionese was my favorite part. Religionese? Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. like, you know, don't don't go to a non-believer speaking religionese <laughs> and I expect just picture to catch. It. I know. You know, when you're, hey there, brother, are brother, you repentant of your sinful past? It's like, <laughs> you're not going to catch it because they don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. They have no idea and what you're saying. And they kind of get intimidated. You know, yeah, like, like, when you, like when you walk up to someone and you're like, you live a sinful life and you need I to. I love that we're all get Southern. Saved you go so right Southern. Now, Southern you know, when we're like, so Southern. I know. It's like you're living oh, your whole man. life wrong and you're a failure. You no, know, don't obviously, like, the Southern accent you know, yeah, keep like, it they don't, thicker. like, they yeah. don't want to, like, <laughs> dial it up. Let's go. Yeah, like, that kind of, like, discourages them to, and like, for sure. It also you know? sets an immediate standard of. I'm on the inside and you're on the outside. Yeah. Which alienation is Correct. not a. You are now isolated because I'm saying things and you're like, right. I know what that means, but. Could you describe that for well, everyone? Well, it's the else? elitism, right? Yes. Which is a pretty off putting trait Absolutely. in general. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's not just for, you know, Christianity or faith, but it's also just in anything, any, in any, any anything. arena of life, you yeah. know. Yeah. Elitist is probably not a, you know, yep. good mindset. But yeah, I love what he said about how Jesus took a lot of notes. He said, Jesus is moving towards people. The question is, am I? Yes. And I thought, man, that's, that's so a good, good one. Because yeah, you like talk that. about there's people that you see and that you follow, and you can watch how. God is pursuing people. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's people in your own personal life. That's people, um, maybe that host podcasts or other things. And you just watch kind of God put people in the path and oh, yeah. in the conversations that you're like, okay, God, I can see that you're pursuing mm-hmm. this person. You know, the question, like you said, am I, am I pursuing people right. the way Jesus is pursuing people? Yep. Am I comfortable with my walk and mm-hmm. it's just me and yeah. I'm good. Cause I know Jesus. Yeah. Or am I saying, well, my neighbor doesn't, my sister doesn't, my friend doesn't, yeah. and going after those people? Because yeah. there is a difference. Oh, yeah, for There's sure. There's a big difference between being like, well, my blessed assurance is that I'm good. Yeah. So now I'm just going to wash my hands and worship happens in my closed doors. Mm-hmm. And it's my relationship and I don't need to worry about anybody else. Yeah. But that's not what we're called to do. Mm-hmm. Right. That's not. Yeah. No. Nope. Moving towards the mess, too. You know, I think yep. that's the, the key is. You know, so often I tried like before before I became a dad, that was something I really like was a really intentional thing. And um, of just wanting to move towards the mess of your kids. Right. Because yep. that's that can be really hard, you know, especially if you. It's one of the hardest things in the world. It man. really is. Man. It is. And especially when they're little and they're throwing throwing up and all that stuff and just gross. Yep. You know, there's moments. um have I told you the story about Judah in the back seat? In the back seat? Oh, like five times. Okay. Yeah, I had a very similar story last yeah. week. I don't know if we even talked about it. Mm-mm. Where my daughter lost it on the dinner table. Yeah. While we were eating dinner, you did tell me that, and yeah. I had to put my utensils down, and I was like, "I'm done." Yeah. I, there's not a way for me to push through this moment. Yeah. Um, I love you, daughter. Yeah. Care about you. I'm gonna throw up if I sit here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I need to walk away. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so it was like last November, Judah, and I just just got my car. And you had it like cleaned and, and perfect. It, yeah. And I'm I'm a pretty clean person. It's a full size sedan. It's a full size sedan. It's a bat- pretty cool I'm a pretty clean person. <laughs> and so Judah's in the back seat and um he was just like we were driving to we were driving here to the office and he goes I mean, Judah, he just turned four, so he was three at the time and he was yep. you know, Daddy, I don't feel good and I was like, Okay, buddy, we're almost there. Just you know, hold on. And then you gave the kids have that look, you yeah. know, like I'm about to throw up look. I'm looking for a prop so that I can mimic exactly what <laughs> occurs. I'm looking for a big 
disc or like a tray or something. <laughs> Can we get Steve a big tray or a disc Just or something, something big and flat? It could be a piece of cardboard. Well, it could be a lid to a bin. While they're getting that, yeah. you know, Jojita is telling me he's not feeling well. So I'm like, we're almost there, buddy. Just, just hang on. And so in my car, I've got these visors that go, you know, to cut the black sun, you know, <laughs> something like that. Put this on the windshield. And um, yeah. and so I hold, so I hand, and I realize he's not going to make it. Right. And so, so you want this? Yeah. Put the mic. They can't hear you if you're not on the mic. Right. So you you yeah. want it? Here. I said, hey, I hand it to him. I said, hey, buddy, if you got to throw up, throw up on on this thing, and I'll clean that. <laughs> so <laughs> and so about two minutes later go by, and I hear it. And I'm like, oh gosh. And I turn around and he had like covered himself with the thing and started throwing up everywhere Bro. in the back seat. Yeah, it was disgusting. And I remember in that moment I just goes like and I did not I did not get a hundred there. Yeah. Like you, as a dad. Because immediately I got you were like, My upset, car, I got my new car. Yeah. I told you to use yeah. this thing. Yep. Like, yeah. you know, you three year old, like it just got real frustrating, really angry and um, did not get a hundred there. Yep. And I remember immediately going, that's not, that's not it. That sucks. Yep. You know, like, and not like negative self-talk to where you're in a bad place, but just like, that's not it, yep. you know, and you can do better. And, um, and so literally he comes to my office and he's laying on the ground. And again, I'm a pretty clean person, yep. pretty organized, pretty clean. And, um, and so I go to my office to check on him. And, um, and he stands up and he just, he's, he threw up again yep. everywhere. And, um, and then, so immediately I, I, you know, just pulled him in, yep. buddy, I love you. You know, it's okay. I'm so sorry. You're not feeling well. And so, but it's that second motion yeah. that we really need to, we need with people yes. of like, Hey, I know your life is messy and you can, you know, scale that up to an adult and not like a physical illness, but people's lives can be really messy. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They can be going through really, you know, awful moments. They can be, you know, yep decisions that have cost them greatly that even put you in an awkward position sometimes and so the things people carry that you would never know until you take the time yeah. to ask and we we had a conversation we won't go into the conversation about somebody we both know mm -hmm. and what they're walking through with their kid yeah that you would never know yeah you would never know 100 percent. and the words that have left their mouth would break your heart yeah in the best way oh yeah like in a good way but it's like you how do you know yeah and that is something they carry 24 7 365 yeah mm -hmm. That you you don't you don't you don't see that on them. Yeah, people are really good at hiding it. Yeah, until you yeah. until they invite you into their mess, which is a privilege. When someone invites you into their mess, well, that's mm -hmm. a good word. Yeah, that's the only way that you would ever know that, and then yeah. you can minister to them. But what level yeah. of right do you have to earn with them to be invited into their mess? Yeah, yeah. it's um, it's the messy house thing, right? Yeah, like if your house is a mess, you don't mind your house being messy when your family's there. That's true. But you're not going to invite guests over yeah. because you're like, yeah. oh, my, I'm not inviting my family. My family could take this, mm -hmm. but I'm not inviting the neighbors over to the house yeah. when it's like this. You don't want to invite them into the mess. But I would invite my parents over yeah, because I'll, I'll invite them into my mess because yeah. they'll come over and be like, oh, you have six kids. Yeah. The house looks like a bomb went off. That's fine. <laughs> but that's the that's the that's the the privilege, like you said. And yeah. I love that about just moving towards the mess in people's lives. Yep. And so when we're fishing for people, it, it means sometimes like moving towards the mess and, you know, getting in the, yep. the middle of it. Yep. So what else jumped out to you, man, for Izzy? Yeah, Izzy, we'll give you a, a touch on the ball. What was <laughs> something about the message that, that stuck out to you, no matter how big or small? Um, oh, honestly, like, I really struggle with, like, trying to, like, reach out to people because, like, honestly, like, from the outside looking in, like, it looks like I'm really introverted, but, like, I'm, like, kind of awkward. <laughs> the best people <laughs> and, like, yeah. and like i really try to like avoid awkward situations so like and i'm really scared of like i don't know like judgment yeah. rejection exactly all the like, things yeah. that everybody yeah. in the back of their head no matter yeah. i'm super extroverted now yeah. going that fear of rejection is still a yeah. ever present thing i just don't wear it on my sleeve the same yeah but yeah. if i walk into a room and i start to talk and people kind of like hey eh. yeah <laughs> that hurts just as yeah. much i'm just not going to show it yeah that same level yeah, yeah. I liked, you know, how he like literally went like step by step and is like, this is like the tools that you need to be successful to, you know, yeah. be able to yeah. cast your little, like, you know, fishing rod and yep. reel them in, you know, like, yeah. you know, all I've, of those like different little, you know, things. I definitely needed to hear that. Along because, the like, lines of what you're saying, yeah. something he said that I probably don't always get 10 on is ask probing questions to figure out where they're at in their walk. Yeah, for well, that's sure. That's what he said. Step one was learn their story. So mm -hmm. good. You know, like ask, move towards people. Yep. Like ask probing questions to their... figure out 
his his example was the waitress, and he was like, "You ever heard John three sixteen? And she was like, "I have no frame of reference of what you're even saying, bro." Yeah. <laughs> what is a John? Why is there three hundred and sixteen of them? Which waitress was that? Was uh, that at um another broken egg? Atlanta. Was it Atlanta? State, yeah, that's right. Because okay. he's saying he's in Atlanta, right by the that's Braves right. Stadium, and he asked a woman like, "Do mm-hmm. you know John three sixteen? And she was like, "Who is John? Yeah. What yeah. is a John? What is a John? I don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. And that's mind blowing because I would assume you would think everyone, right, even if you're yeah. not a Christian, you've never read the Bible, you've heard someone say John. Yeah. Even if you were a WWF fan, yeah, and you liked Stone Cold Steve Austin and Austin three sixteen was a thing, so you knew what John three sixteen. You know what I mean? Yeah, you would think there's some reference there, and just to not know it, and you have to ask the questions because if you start speaking anything Bible to somebody who has never even heard what the Bible is, yeah, you lost it. They it's don't true. know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So that was a good one for me because I'm ready. I think I'm ready to start at step B or C and sometimes I'll miss step A. Be and people are polite enough to smile and nod. Yeah. But you're not getting through because they have no idea what you're talking about. And because yeah. you have no idea where they are. Correct. And so that's, yeah. you know, yeah. knowing that's your good fish, one. knowing your... It's really, really good. I love what he said. He said, um, he said, people often reject Jesus because of our misrepresentation of Jesus. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's, you know, because if people experience who Jesus is, like truthfully, yes, like purely, it's so like, which is not you or me. What would you not want about that? You know, like if you really get the, when you read Jesus and, you know, you can read the gospels and you read his words and like, what is not to be on board with there? What is not to feel pursued by that? Yeah. But oftentimes it's people's, misrepresentation of him yes yeah doing things and so like taking the name you know taking god's name in vain yep. mm-hmm. is misrepresenting him in a big way sometimes oh, yeah. and yeah. so you you do things you say things and sometimes you think they're right yeah mm-hmm. you know you think but they often can be your tradition or your uh preference, preference. or your you yep. know opinion yep and we mold that into well jesus says well yes okay is that jesus is that or is that you know, tyler or is that tyler or is that steve is that is different it, yes you know, are, they, are they the same I, uh, I talked to my high schoolers about that this week. We were talking about anger, mm-hmm. and I was talking about how your representation of anger to a non-believer yeah. is a representation of Jesus in their eyes. Mm-hmm. So if you are quick to fire off, if you have a short fuse, and they know that you're a Christian because you openly wear the Jesus jersey, yeah. Yeah. you know, you post Bible verses, and you yeah. talk about Jesus, and you talk about church, and then you're the first one to get mad, to a non-believer who doesn't read the Bible, you're the Bible they're reading. And what they're saying is, that's a Christian. Yeah. That's Christ. Yeah. Why I'm would good. I want anything yeah. I'm good. with that? I'm yeah. so good. Yeah. And something with that, like, I saw this one girl on TikTok or on Instagram. Perfect. She was like... Love TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she she made this comment and she was like, if you were to take like that Bible verse out of your bio, would people still know that you're a Christian? I've seen that too. And like that's that, so good. That, would, that literally like hit yeah. like my heart and like my soul. And I was like, wow, like I need mm. to like yeah. lock in, yep. oh, you know, yeah. like I need to like, you know, speak about, you know, Jesus more and like, you know, yeah. be kinder, you know, and be more patient. We just got to lock, yeah. lock in. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. That's my favorite. Lock in. I like that one. Yeah. Lock and in. like that really humbled me. And that's I was good. like, yeah. wow. If like, I were to take that Bible yeah. verse out of your bio, yeah, would would anything know? about your profile, let me know that you follow Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I know. And that was really like, yeah. yeah, it really put a different perspective on like how I see myself and how I need to act yeah, towards people, you know, towards just everything in my life. And I'm like that. Yeah. I love the practicality change. of what he said too. just talking about, you know, know the person, mm-hmm. don't learn their story, learn where they're at, right. Who you're going after, but then also putting your own story in a way that you could say it in like, you know, three to yeah. five sentences mm-hmm. and where it's not convoluted. It's yep. not, you know, blurry. It's not, well, I just, sometimes I used to think I would feel God in the ocean and, yeah. but now sometimes I don't, but sometimes I still do. And 30 then, second testimony, yeah, man. Have you that know, 30 second that testimony up. spring loaded. Mm-hmm. You can argue apologetics. You can argue science. You can argue a lot of things yeah. in the Bible. You can't argue my testimony. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That Who is you were before fact. Jesus. That's right. Then Jesus showed up. And now I'm and now, this. you know, can't argue that. What would you say that is for you if you were to like, I know putting you guys on the spot, yeah. but like what's your, my 30 you second testimony? Jesus, who's, you know, yep. So when did Jesus show up. I was raised very religious, thought I knew who Jesus was, had no relationship with him. Yeah. When I hit the lowest of the lows, I had nothing to fall back on but myself and my failures. And I knew how empty and far away and broken I was. And at my most broken, he met me yeah. mm-hmm. in my brokenness and reminded me that I am enough. Reminded me that it wasn't just about me. There's so much more out there. And it was at a night of worship. Mm -hmm. And he came into my life. I got on fire for him. And the more I chased after him, 
the more I saw the fruits of that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I cannot believe how different my life is now, mm -hmm. how different I view myself, how different I view others. Um, dude, dude, it's the self-control. And that's the thing, right? Is because I came, became a Christian, I didn't get less angry because that was my big problem mm -hmm. was anger. I learned to control it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still fire off up here, but then I have the processor that goes, hey man, that's dishonoring. Mm -hmm. Don't say that next word. Take yeah. a breath, figure it out. This is emotion. This is in fact. Yeah. And I have that like self-control and that peace to go, that is somebody else that matters just as much as me. So like maybe, so, and I don't get a hundred. Yeah. I have my moments. Sure. I still flare up. But if you knew me at 25 mm -hmm. and you wow. knew me now. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite sentences. If Who I run into guy? somebody from college and they're like, bro, you're so different. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, let me, can I tell you why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can 100%. we have that talk about yeah. why I'm so different? Yeah. So that's my, that's my 30 seconds. Right awesome. There. Yeah. yeah. Izzy, um, what about you? Mine, I really, so like my eighth grade year, okay, so starting from the, the beginning, I have always like grown up religious, you know, like my dad went to church and I went to, I went with him, you know, I wore the dresses and the makeup and whatever, but I like, I never really like. I didn't wear the dresses yeah. and the makeup. <laughs> it wasn't part of my church. <clears throat> yeah. But I always, you know, I always like knew of him. Yes. Yeah. But however, going into high school, like my ninth grade year and like, um, especially my eighth grade year, like I didn't, you know, it got to a point where I was like, you know, like, is God even real? Oh yeah. And there was a point where I was like, I fully convinced myself that I was crazy and that like, there wasn't, you know, a real God out there. You know, devil has really got in my head and was like, you know, God's not even real. So why are you even believing? You know, like that's stupid. Yep. And like, that's kind of where I was like, wow, like I have grown up religious all of my life. And like somehow at the lowest of my lows, mm. you know, that's when the devil was like, he's not even real. Yep. And that's when he wants to take God away from you and leave you by yourself. That's a good word. But God always meets you where you are, you know, even when we don't even deserve it. Yep. And like, that's exactly what he did. I went through really bad depression, you know, and like, you know, I was in therapy um, <clears throat> and that was just a really low time in my life. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was really alone, you know, I, I had just moved here. I had no friends, you know, no one to like lean back on. And I would like, I felt so alone, but like, you know, finding Jesus, you know, he really does change you from the inside out. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And like, now I'm full of life and I'm like happy and I'm like, mm energetic now and like that's yeah. such a blessing yeah. because like looking back on like where i've came from mm -hmm. and like how far i've made it now like i would not be the same person i was yeah. Yeah. if i had never fully given my life to jesus because like you know i don't deserve it you know and like i you know i've, I've sinned and i've you know i've been a bad person you know like but it's not about you deserving it it's about you know like yeah. him still being you know yeah. gracious to you and like doesn't matter, you know, and also I love to say this, you know, like you don't have to like shower before you come to Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, like yep. he wants you, you know, you're battered and bruising and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. And that like, yeah, those hard times in my life, it was just like, yeah, definitely a low, but Jesus met yep. me where I was and yep. now I'm and saved. It's, it's, so, cool. Now. it's yeah. so cool how Look Jesus shows now. up in people. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I know your story when you kind of came back and for me, it was a Doug Jolly and a Mel. Mm -hmm. Like God showed up, Jesus showed up in yeah. people That's right. Yeah. because I wasn't ready to listen to him. Mm -hmm. I was so like stiff army. Yeah. So he was like, well, I'm going to send people who follow me closely oh, yeah. into your life and they're going to love you. That are good representations right. of Jesus. And then you're going to ask yeah. questions like, why does this person care? Yeah. Why is yeah. this? And then you're like, Hey, what's different? They tell you. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? This is the this is the power of like invite. You know, oh, yeah. I say it, it was, again. Yeah. The this power is the power of the people invite, in the back, yeah. baby. And okay, yeah. So, like, I had gotten invited, or you know, sorry, I wasn't invited. But <laughs> however, however, up anyway. however, <laughs> cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> however, <laughs> um, so they were going to a night of worship, yeah. and I. And I was kind of like, oh, like I haven't been to church in a really long time, yep. you know, like, and I was like, I kind of miss it, you yeah. know, like I mm -hmm. kind of miss that feeling of like, you know, God, you yep. know, like that warm kind of fuzzy, like hug, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and you came with Kelsey and Delicato, is that, mm -hmm. is that right? I came with uh, Jamie Mason. That's and right. Like, yeah. 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 Emma, with that group. Like, yep. yeah, yeah. 
Um, but Emma had a spare ticket yeah. from like a, one of the games here. Yeah. And like, that's where I kind of found out about like YTH and stuff like that. So I went to the night of worship and I was like sobbing tears and I was like, which night of worship you was know, it? It was so not this, uh, I, I think can it was tell like you exactly two when ago. It was, man. When was because it? she started the floodgates of salvations. Yeah. I was the first one to walk when up Pastor on stage. Tim gave the invitation at PLT. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah. Nobody moved, and he mm -hmm. gave it a second time, and she walked on stage, and before yeah. you knew it, there was ten people on stage. Was this next the to her. um, was Shada Dance Company? Yes. Yeah. Was that one? Yep. It was yeah. one Shada. Yeah, yeah. That and was. She started the the floodgates, and awesome. so she was yeah. the first one to step out in obedience during the yeah. second call. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and I was like, yeah, that God that moved. that entire night just like changed my life, and I was like, you know, that like that's just that's the power of it you oh, know yeah, and yeah. it was just like it's that was like every time i think about it i get like happy and i'm like yeah that's literally the night that changed my life yeah you know and like that's so beautiful yeah and, and your, I, like, your walk is so encouraging yeah. to me izzy because you show up on wednesdays when you're not at a meet or something mm -hmm. you show up on wednesdays you don't miss you come on sundays you drive yourself you show yeah. up on sunday you sit with my family mm -hmm. but you're obedient I know sometimes when you show up on Sundays that you're like, I got four hours of sleep. Life <laughs> is tough right now. I got work after, but you show up yep. on your own at seven, 17, 16, 16, 16, 16, mm -hmm. 16 years old. You set the alarm, you get in your car, you drive yourself, you sit with me and my family, you make it a priority. Mm -hmm. I was not that 16 year old. So it's very encouraging to me to watch that. It's something when your parents go to church and you go with them. Yeah. It's something when you have like a big group and everyone... You do you do this on your own a lot, mm -hmm. and that is crazy encouraging to watch. Yeah, because like you that's know, discipline, that's obedience, yeah. that's mm -hmm. admirable. Because God has literally like changed my entire life. So like going to church every Sunday, that's like a. It's almost like why would I not? You yeah. know, like the person that literally changed my entire life. You know, yeah. it's literally like, you know, why it's like it's like two hours it's of so like good. Yeah. two hours of my entire week dedicated to God mm. and like, you know, yeah. plus YTH and stuff like that. But like, mm -hmm. you know, it feels, you know, like just yeah. do it, you know, yeah. like and it's, there, it, and there are some seasons when you may not have that feeling. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I think yeah. it's important to use discipline, right? You, yeah. you still stay obedient. Exactly. You're you're you don't want of to. Discipline. Exactly. Yep. But yeah, it's the discipline of doing the things you know you need to do when you need to do oh, it. Yeah. yeah. Because it may not, you know, it may not fuel you for today, but it'll fuel you for what's coming. And That's right. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And it's also and, like, sorry. No, you're and it's good. also go like, ahead. um, on Sundays, it's always like the devil is like, oh, that's boring. You don't want to go. 100%. And like, I'm always like excited to yeah. go like during the week. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to church on Sunday. You know, I'm so excited. It's going to be sunny that day. You yeah. know, I love when it's like church and sunny and I walk out and it's like beautiful outside. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like, um, the devil's like, oh, that's, it's boring, you know, you and it, yeah, it makes me not want to go yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that's when you have to like, be like, shut yeah. up. I'm going anyway. Oh, yeah. Shut so, up, devil. Shut up, yeah. devil. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, he could clean and jerk the world. Yeah, Jesus could exactly. clean and jerk the world. He could do right. it. Right. That's going to be a sticker or a shirt. That's going to be something. Me he'll do it. I'm going to make a, the universe. I'm going to make a whole series yeah. called Jesus Could Clean it. and Jerk the Universe. Exactly. <laughs> I've the ultimate seen deadlifter. Jesus yeah. clean and jerk the world. <laughs> I've seen him. So cut what that, is your that, testimony? That. Let's hear it. Yeah, you got 30 well, seconds. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're at an hour right now. <laughs> yeah. You got 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, no, it's, um, I mean, super similar. I think that's what you, you hear about stories is like, they're all super similar. Radically, mm -hmm. trans radically transformed lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so mine was super similar, you know, grew up in um, church and <coughs> instead of Catholicism, it was baptism yep. or Baptist, okay. you know, Baptist. Yeah. Southern free will, free will, Southern Baptist church, bless God. Um, <laughs> and so you can grow up and, but be so religious that you miss them, yep. you know, yeah. very pharmaceutical. And that was my story, you know, grew up and, um, and I found myself like super judgy and just not walking with him, but expected you know what I mean? Other people to live up to a standard I yeah. couldn't live up to. And um, and eventually, you know, you got into scripture. I think I was a senior in high school and I've been following Jesus for a while. Yeah. But man, just immediately just dove into the scriptures and found an authority for it, an affection and a word for it and a love for it. And then from yeah. there, you, when you read the, you know, when you read the Bible about who Jesus was, it just changes everything. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was my, you know, and then I learned what grace was and how to love people well, serve people well and. You know, boom, boom. Yeah, that's it. But that's the, that's the, um, the template, you know, is in taking that template and being able to share that with people. And yeah. when you, you meet people and who doesn't want that? Yeah. That's so. right. Anything else for the message guys? 
That's it, man. What's so good? I think we're at 58 minutes. Is that your guess? 58. How long do you think we're at, Izzy? 59. 59? Oh. Actually, wait. I think we're at almost exactly an hour. Okay. okay. I'm going to go with 51. All right. Where are we at? So right at an hour? I was right. All right, Izzy. I was right. All right, yeah, because somebody had to go. Number two in the nation, number one in the room. coffee and maybe wear pants and maybe wear shorts and just, you know, it's okay. You look great. Thanks. The black on black is, it's very nice. It's very nice. I'm going to lift after this, so. After we eat lunch. Yeah, me too. eat lunch and then I'm going to go. Yeah. Today's my first day lifting. We talked about that. We did. I'm praying back for your back, it. man. Thanks, man. <laughs> praying that your back heals up. No, you tweaked his back. I that wasn't a joke. I'm legitimately praying oh. that his back heals up. As Sorry, he gets back I find that funny because, yeah. like, Who my back is always like R.I.P. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> me same. too. It's okay. Me <laughs> whole life. Yeah. Have you seen? There's a meme now where it's like the predator sees me in my 30s, and it's like the whole the lower like, back heat. Well, it's all the heat from back here. Yeah. Oh, gosh, so funny. But anyways. um... What's that, John? I, I, like can, I can hold off I'm on good. that. I'm good. I'm yeah. good at 34 and I don't want my quarters. check engine light to come on. Right you know, my knee so. check engine light went on a long time ago. Did it? It's not good. But well, I got a funny story from Judah at the zoo I can share. I do like funny stories from Judah at the zoo. So we went to the zoo on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Told you guys about yep. that. No, Saturday. And um, and so him and I walked off, and I forget where the, the inc- like the enclosure pen was or something, like wildebeest or just some, like, some other animal from the I don't know what from, it's called from the plains one of those animals that yeah. you don't really know what it is yeah. kind of like a kangaroo kind of like a deer you just don't know I actually know exactly what you mean you there's a lot about? of the things you're like they walk on four legs they have horns uh, they have some kind of stripes something. yeah there's something yeah something dukus is like one of something, them yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so we're over there and he's right in, in the way the fencing works so he's Kudus. he's there next he's there yeah. next to me and I'm standing there it's just me and him and um, there's two female zoo workers in the enclosure that are like tending to the habitat, or yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Tell me they got. Tell oh, me they wait. got wrecked. What do you mean? Just like, go ahead. I don't want to. Yeah. So, I'm imagining in my head. So Judah, things. Judah just like yells out as loud as he can. They had their backs to us. That's important to note. So they had their backs to us. They're working the enclosure, and Judah yells out, "Hey, hey!" really loud, and then immediately sprints and runs. <laughs> So by the time they turn around, it's just you. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> and the look they gave was like the weirdest look of pity of like, oh my gosh. Hey, bud. Hey, man. Hey. Welcome to the zoo. And at that point, what do you do? <laughs> wave back. What do you do? Is you it? wave back. You well, own it. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> I couldn't like explain, yeah. hey, my four year old just ran off, you know? Yep. So I just. Yep. You just wave. Hey. Hey. And try to mimic the voice. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Oh, it was, it was so cringy. <laughs> That's good, but man. it was a fun. Just one of those moments you're like, this only happens to me. My favorite thing about the zoo with my kids is we go to that bird thing where you feed the birds and they fly all over you, <laughs> and they have the sticks and they're like, oh, I want it, mm-hmm. and then they start getting chased and they freak out. Oh yeah, they freak out. So oh, now yeah. I have four little kids running around screaming that they're being chased by birds <laughs> after they sat there with sticks <laughs> for ten minutes trying to get all the birds to chase them. So that's always really fun. So we did that, and yeah. Lucille who's my six-year-old, she, the first time we've gone, like, every, she gets a little more braver every time. Yeah. This time she actually, because you know there's, like, the door before the door? Yes. There's the pre-room before you yeah. go into the big room of the birds. And so her and I go to the pre-room, the, the first door, and we're feeding, <laughs> we're feeding the birds through the fence. Okay. Okay, so we got the little sticks, yep. we're feeding the birds through the fence. The budgies. Well, Budgies. All like thousands of the birds came to the door, and then someone opened the door, and they came and they in. All came into the front room, <laughs> and like there's other people in the room that are freaking out. We have to help get the bird. Yeah. Grab a bird. I'm like, I'm not touching the bird. <laughs> like, I don't work here, you know. And so, and then yeah. so we get we, we go into the big room, and of course that doesn't go well. So yeah. we we leave pretty quickly, and um and but that's. Only the only thing anybody can talk about yeah. is like, how did all these birds get in this room? Gee, I don't know. <laughs> how did that happen? Like, I don't I don't know. I think it could have been our fault a little bit. But I, I have a funny memory with Sarah too. Have you been to the wolf enclosure there? Potentially. So it's a long run. Instead of like a big open habitat, it's mm-hmm. like a long run, so it can kinda it's more long yes. than it is wide. Yes. And it's a plexiglass divider. And Sarah starts running and it's chasing her up and down. 
it clearly wants to eat her. <laughs> there is no if, ands, or buts. But little six year old Sarah's like, look, he likes me. <laughs> She's <laughs> running up and down and like salivating and chasing <laughs> after her. And I'm like, okay, come on. Oh. It's time to go. Yeah. <laughs> before it figures out the way out of here. All right, before we leave, do you want to play a game? Um, what game we always end with the game. What game the game play? we played last time was fun. Wavelength? The wavelength. The, the numbers? Oh, yep. Yeah. The numbers one? Do you know this game? Mm hmm. How does am I the only TikTok, one that didn't bro. know this game? TikTok. Is it TikTok? No, we, we played this game on like an app. Like I played it on like with okay. my friends. It's like an app. You know, like pick something and like you have to see like where it is on their wavelength. Yes, okay. on their number yeah. scale. Yeah. So um Izzy, why don't you pick the category? Okay. No, 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 no. No. We have to pick a number. Okay. And then you say categories. And that person gives a representation of what their number is okay. to that category. And you're trying to guess the number. That Let's they have do thought. this. I'll pick a number. Okay. You pick the category. Okay, and then she has to try to guess. And then she has to try to guess. Okay. okay. And we'll do we'll do three categories, and then we'll see where we're at. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So you have to. Th uh, we're closing our eyes. And it's okay. Yeah, we you do. You show the system. number. You show the number to the. Yep. So the close camera. your eyes, guys. Yep. Let us know when your number's down. And it's one to ten. I'll tell you when I'm done. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm done. You locked you locked in your number? I'm locked in. Connor, you know what the number is? Okay. All right. All right. We're <laughs> going to go with common breakfast cereals. I'm so ready for this. Well, yeah. Okay. You say a common breakfast cereal that matches your number on a scale from one to ten. So what does she do? It tries to guess what the number is. We oh, were trying so to say okay. Yeah. Sorry. So if you said two and I said common breakfast cereal, you'd say raisin bran, and we'd be and like, "Well, that's a terrible that. breakfast cereal," <laughs> and we would start to think like, yeah. "Oh, your number's pretty low." Oh, okay, yeah. But even though I picked the number, yes. Yeah. It's like we're you're... trying to guess your number based on your answers. I understand. So I'm just going to tell breakfast cereals that are that are my number that yes. are your number. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yes. Honey nut Cheerios. Okay. Okay. Where are you thinking? Okay, Give Honey me Nut like Cheerios. A two okay. to three number range based on Honey Nut Cheerios. All right, let's go like six or like a seven because like they're boring but they're sweet and like sometimes you crave them. And they're, and they're like they're always there. Exactly. When you need them. Yeah, you know, they're, they're just like they're maybe, maybe they're like nostalgic or something. Yeah, I don't always want to eat a mouthful of marshmallows yeah. for breakfast. So yeah. like Honey Nut Cheerios is okay. So we're at yeah. a six seven. Okay. Right. Yeah. Next category, we're gonna go with. Oh, sorry. I understand now. I I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm I'm now understanding the game. We can play. We've played this before. <laughs> I know, but it was like two weeks ago. So, well, so do you need then. to give a different answer, representative no, no, of your no, number? No, no, no. I'm yeah. That was a great answer. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, we're gonna I mean, go. I'm not with, confirming the. I'm not confirming anything, but yeah. If you go to a restaurant mm -hmm. and they have Coca-Cola products, a soda that they would have on the menu. Doctor Pepper. Well, that depends. I know. Because if somebody loves Dr. That Pepper, very, that's like... I know. That is very polarizing. Uh-huh. But it shouldn't be. Okay, okay, but I feel like being Dr. Pepper being six is a crime. Now, I will tell you that I've been to many to meals too with this man. Too low? Many a meals. And too I've never low. seen him order a Dr. Pepper. I've seen him order Diet Cokes. So he's not a Dr. Pepper fiend. Okay. So just so you have background there. Okay. He's not the guy that wakes up and rolls over out of bed and like <laughs> cracks a cold Dr. Pepper out of his mini like, fridge. Like, so like, like every single exist? teenage girl in this entire here. generation. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. We had one work here who every morning, JP's like that with Mountain Dew. Well, no, Mountain he's, Dew is sugar-free Mountain Dew. Yes, but it's his thing. JP shows up at 7 a.m. with a Mountain Dew. Like that's his, that's pretty cool. It's his thing. Every okay. Sunday. He's already had at least one. On the drive. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So where are you at with at? knowing that he's a Diet Coke guy? Okay. Like, I think I'm still, if he's not a Diet Coke guy, I'm still sitting around a six or a seven because like okay. sometimes like Dr. Pepper is very likable and yeah. I feel like it can't be lower than a six. Do I give feedback or no? no. Like, okay. no. I don't know. Cause like, just, unless, just rock. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking very mid, like maybe so I'm thinking, six, I'm thinking six, more seven? seven. Okay. All right. One more and then we'll, we'll see if we can lock it yeah. in. Okay. A... Common piece of Halloween candy. Something that you would reach out, very common Halloween candy, and that you would have. An orange Tootsie Roll. What? An orange <laughs> Tootsie Roll. Why are you, you like, about an orange like hot, flavored Tootsie Roll? Yeah, like the like the weird ones that nobody eats. Yeah. That you only get at Halloween because you yeah. find it in a bag, yeah. Where do you even find those? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, but, they're like spawn at Halloween. But you all, but you all yeah. <laughs> 
so what what number are you because that threw me off yeah that, that, that <laughs> yeah that threw me off because i'm like that's a trash candy i know that's not good well what if he likes those maybe what he's if, weird like what that. if they like for like what if that's his like he's he keeps weird, them all year he, yeah. he hoards them at halloween yeah <laughs> all right lock in a number we'll see see where we're at <sighs> okay let's see i'm gonna say seven what was your number is, is seven the number yeah yeah that's the official number um, it was an eight. Okay. Oh. All right, that was pretty close. So you lose, Izzy. That, that's, your Can't goal is to get number one at everything. Your goal is to get her to guess it right. You lose too. <laughs> no, I It's why it's called wavelength. No, I I no. <laughs> I win. Izzy You're trying loses. to walk her onto the number. She may be number two in the nation, but she is <laughs> not here. <laughs> you think orange Tootsie Rolls are an eight? I know. That's a crime. You're a I'm psychopath. sorry. That's like <laughs> There's but, something wrong with you. You don't like yeah. orange tootsie rolls? They come out once a year for a those reason. Are, those are the like the only candy that people like are like, nah. Do you want this? And they're like, nah. And they're, that, like, that they, they like get in the thrown of the away. Pillow case and gets thrown away. <laughs> no, no, they're mm, all. That's a stretch. Yeah, they're all trash. <laughs> those are all sub five candies. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you start what talking about those number eight on the candy scale, the caramel covered Snickers? green apple lollipops. Like especially like no, Snickers is like premium. I I'd, I'd put a Snickers okay. at like a nine. I give it, it's not quite a 10 because okay. it's not my, but it's yeah. but like the, a Reese's would be a 10. The, okay. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. The green apple lollipops covered in caramel. Oh yeah. That would be an good. eight for me. That's good. That, that okay. Would be what eight. about like a little Rolo? That's a nine probably. Oh, but a Rolo, they're kind of boring and they're small. I'd give so a I would seven. say run like an eight. With the caramel a seven, yeah. 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 No, that's an eight or nine. Yeah. yeah. Solid. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Milk Dud would be like a four. Butterfingers a 10. Butterfingers a 10. Oh, 10. Butterfingers and Reese's. 10. 10 out of Hard 10. 10. No In questions. any form of those things. Yes. So like a Reese's well, no, pumpkin. No, 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 no. So if it's a Reese's mini cup, I'm actually throwing a nine. But if it's a Reese's Christmas tree, a Reese's egg where the peanut butter the ratio is higher. That are yes. still wrapped like a normal Reese's. It's too, too much chocolate. It's too yeah. much work. Well, it's too much work. That too. Because you got to like. You have to, yeah. It's yeah. like eating shrimp. But Reese's eggs. <laughs> Reese's eggs. Reese's Christmas trees. Robin or no Whoppers. Whoppers are I like Whopper eggs. You Whopper have to like malted. Easter. Yes. Yeah. I like malted. Who does? But if you don't like malted stuff, that's not for you. Yeah. Good oh, talk. Man. But the fact that orange tootsie rolls are an eight makes me question our friendship. I enjoy I them at like a high yeah, level. I, I they're one of my favorite candies. You you and Adam both have very season. suspect candy flavors. What's Adam his? Adam likes French vanilla cherry cordials. What is it? I don't even know. What, what even that is. is that? It's like the cherry covered in goo inside of chocolate. Yeah. But he really likes the that. French vanilla version Actually, of that. Have you had the fancy chocolates that are like orange flavored? They're good. That is fun. <laughs> those are good. Yeah. The the one that looks like an orange and you smash uh -huh. it and like the slices come out. Yeah. Those are good. I like those. That is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, well what guys. A, what a great way to end. What a great podcast. Izzy, yeah. thanks for joining us. Of What's course. coming up? Thanks for having you want to plug anything before we leave? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Meats or Easter? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Deli meat. Easter. Easter. Be there. 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Tell them. Bring Lizzie, somebody. Tell I just told you guys why, like, bringing people is important. Yeah. And where's Do Easter it. at? Um, it is at the Sanger Theater Sanger in Pensacola. Theater in Pensacola. Be there. Bring someone. Yes. Love it. And we're going to celebrate Jesus rising up from the dead. That's right. He That's is right. risen. He yes. is risen. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Wait, we'll we see you. Wait, we should have, what? like, yeah. done that, like, as, like, a promo. Jesus is risen. He's risen. Risen. Yeah. Risen. Okay. okay. Bye, Thank you guys. Right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.